Welcome to Healing School. Father, I pray that every heart and every ear is receptive to your word. Let it be your word they hear, it be your word they keep. And I give you the praise and the glory for all the goodness and the mercy that comes from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How is everybody doing today? Good. Praise God. Well, God wants to see us even gooder. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just since I left the office, mm -hmm. I've developed a pain. Well, we're just not going to receive it. Well, I agree with you. That's just leaving you. That's just leaving you right now, isn't it? Isn't it? We have the authority. We have the authority given to us by Jesus Christ himself. And we just stand right now in his name and in his power. And all evil works have to submit to the name of Jesus Christ. We don't receive it. Harriet doesn't receive it. We just kick it out with her. And devil, you take it back where you, where you brought it from. Take it back with you. And don't bring it back again. We give you the praise and the glory for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Mary Kay, let's just stand with you. Let's just start this off. I want this battery supernaturally gone so I don't have to go through surgery. Well, Lord, you heard her request. You heard her faith. Lord God, be it unto her, even as she has believed, Father God, that that battery be gone, that battery be removed. Yes. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, that her heart operates truly, Lord, as you created it to function, Lord, in perfection, no imperfections, just strength and pumping with the life of God flowing through her body. We give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the brain, it's not the heart. Oh, okay then. Well, then we will just stand right now for total total health, total healing. Lord God, we give you praise and we thank you that there is total health, restoration, restoration taking place in her body. We thank you for it, Lord God. It is hers for the taking. I thank you, Lord God, that she can receive that even now today. I thank you, Lord God, for your word that you have sent and healed us. Thank you, Father. Thank you that it is your word that heals us. We give you praise. We take it in. We receive it, Lord God. It is a medicine to all our flesh. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. And now to your back. To her back. This is this is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. For him to show himself. Show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Lord God, the word tells us the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself forth on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Lord God, this is a heart right here who is expecting and praising you, giving glory to you, Lord God, that there is health and healing now returning to her body, strength. Thank you, Lord God. Pain, you must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, you go. There is no putting up with you. You go. Get out in Jesus' name. You leave her. She is a child of God. You have no right to come against her. We give you praise, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. It feels better. It feels better? Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. Feels a lot better. Amen, amen, amen. There's no stinging, no pain. It feels really good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shannon? After. Amen, amen. Well, that's the way I like to start with the Word of God, right? <laughs> That's what he wants, amen? He wants his word manifesting in each and every one of us, right? Isn't that the reason he came? He came to destroy the works 
undo the works of that enemy, right? He's come for that, and you know what? It's done. It is done. I praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> okay, let's go to Luke um, chapter 2. And I'm going to start in verse 7, okay? We're staying with the message, Christ, our Savior, right? Our Savior has come. Amen? So let me start with uh, verse 7 here in chapter 2. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in, sw wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel, excuse me, <clears throat> and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our answers are here. Amen. Our answers, our salvation, our deliverance is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we were mentioning last week, how important this time of year is where um, all around the world they're hearing about Jesus being born, the Savior being born. Amen. Amen. And people are more tender hearted this time of year. So it makes it like the perfect time for us to be able to reach out to them. They're hungry for it. There are people all around us that are hungry for a touch from God, right? Even a smile, um, a kind word, you know, open the door for, you know, an older person, even a younger person, holding up, you know, hold, holding up yourself while someone who's in a hurry, just let, open the door, let them on in, and tell them Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, in a good way, right? Right? They receive things that are, that are brought out in love. Amen? That's what's needed right now. And we might even find that we have, we've been given an opportunity to pray with someone. Right? Pray with them. And help them. It's amazing how many people are ready to hear what you have to say when you say it in love. Praise God. People are starving for it. So let's share it, right? Let's share the Word of God with them. Let's share the love of God with them. Amen? Amen. Because what was the purpose, like I said, to bring us back into a relationship with a loving God, right? Through fellowship with him, so we could have fellowship once again with a Father God who so loves us. Amen. Jesus came as our deliverer um, to this earth, right? To save us from whom? Satan's dominion, right? Amen. I praise God for that. Amen. So um, I'm going to look back at verse 10 in what we just read. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Well, I read these to you last week, I believe, and I'm going to go ahead and share them again from the other translations, okay? What they are saying in the Living Bible. But the angel assured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. I love that. I bring you the most joyful news. There cannot be any more joyful news than this. Our Savior has come. And it is for who? Everyone. It's for everyone. Amen? The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, had been born tonight in Bethlehem. The New Life Version of verse 10 says, The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. See, I bring you good news of great joy, which is for all people. Today, one who saves from the punishment of sin has been born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. 
Hallelujah. And the complete Jewish, Jewish tells us there was born for you a deliverer who is the Messiah, the Lord. That is who he is to us. Our deliverer, our redeemer, our savior, amen, our king. Glory to God. Savior is one that saves from danger or destruction. He is one who brings salvation. Jesus Christ, the redeemer of sin and the saver of souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Messiah means the promised anointed one. Christ uh, interpreted is the anointed one. Hallelujah. So now back to verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. They were praising God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Why were they celebrating and praising God already? They were praising and celebrating and honoring God, glorifying God, but nothing had happened yet, right? Although a babe had been born in Bethlehem, our Savior, yet nothing had been done yet other than, yes, his birth, the beginning <laughs> of our salvation, amen? The beginning of everything we will, the beginning of everything we will ever need, amen? Had salvation been accomplished yet? No, but yet they celebrated, okay? So that brings me to what I had gotten during prayer, um, I think it was last week or the week before, and I just didn't, it just didn't um, seem the right time, but this is the right time. And this was, um, we have been going through um, our Bible reading plan, so I'm leaning into this. Um, this was in November, and we were reading, um, this was the November, no, I'm sorry. Yes, this was November 28th, and we were reading uh, our Bible reading plan, okay? So um, this, is what I, this is what was coming out of it. Um, this is talking about the order of offerings, the order of um, how we give our offerings and our, our gifts, um, sacrifices to the Lord, amen? Amen. So, my offering, my bread, for my sacrifices made by fire as a pleasing aroma to me, you will guard to offer to me at their time. This is the Lord talking to them, okay? The Lord spoke about regular burnt offerings offered in the morning, evening, grain offerings. I'm just trying to get to you. There were offerings, okay? This is what the Lord commanded. Um, uh, it was mentioned as regular. These were to be regular burnt offerings, okay, um, that were first ordained at, the, at Mount Sinai as a pleasing aroma to God. He loves this. He loves regular burnt offerings, okay? Um, also, these offerings were on the Sabbath, grain offerings, drink offerings, um, along with the burnt offering. Okay, um, I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> monthly offerings. Okay, there were monthly offerings. All right. These were commanded at the beginning of the month. They would be offered with burnt offerings and grain offerings, peace offerings. There were sin offerings. There were Passover offerings. There were offerings at the Feast of Weeks. And so what came to me is, okay, so all of this was necessary. Okay, this was pleasing to God. It was as a pleasing aroma to God. So what does that have to do with us? We're in the New Testament. We're not in the Old Testament anymore. But in the New Testament, what is our offering? Our praises from our lips. It can't get any more easier than that. Is the sacrifice of praise from our lips is now all that God requires. Along with, yes, we want to walk in love, of course. That, that doesn't have to be said. You know that, right? But offerings of praise, sacrifice of praise, is all that is required of us today because everything else has been done, right? According to the word, Jesus was the sacrifice for us, wasn't he? His blood 
His body whipped for us. His blood shed for us, for our forgiveness, for our healing. It's all been done, right? And um, Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 2 will tell us, Be followers of God and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. Philippians 4, um, the way we live our lives before God as an as giving of a, off a particular smell is a sweet aroma of an acceptable sacrifice. Amen and amen. 2 Corinthians 2.15 tells us to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering, right, and sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen. And Hebrews 13.15 tells us, let us continually offer to God. Here it is. Here is the summation of it. Hebrews 13, 15. Let us continually, how often? Continually. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise and do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices, such sacrifices, God is pleased. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continu continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise praise the fruit of lips that openly profess his name amen praise is oftentimes a response to some action that directly benefits us and we feel generous to extend our thanksgiving okay and as in other times we find it easy to praise god from this same motivation which is when he had blessed us and when he has helped us and protected us we expect we express our praise don't we Okay, this kind of praise, although it is worthwhile, it's not a sacrifice because it's something that's already been given to us. And we are merely not only merely, but we are praising him and we are thanking him. But here's the sacrifice of praise. It's when there are times when it looks like our prayers did not come through the way we thought they would. It's when a medical test comes back with results we did not want. It's when close family has gone astray. It's when finances are greatly lacking and a large bill comes in. It's when praise, th times like that are when praises go up to God, but yet they seem so small. Or the last thing we would seem to have in our hearts is thanks to God. Not because of what is going on, but because of who he is and what he's going to bring us through. Don't you believe that? It's what he's going to bring us through. Amen. It's when victory looks all but gone. And so praise to God in those times becomes a personal sacrifice. It takes an act of our will to lay our all and what we don't understand on the altar before God. So in choosing to praise him, we are choosing to believe that even through life, that even though life isn't going as we planned, or it isn't going as we thought it should, God is still good. God is still faithful. Amen. And he is the one we choose, our choosing to put our trust in, aren't we? Amen. And it's in that storm when we praise God in spite of the storm. Amen. That he is honored. And in our honor to him, our faith grows deeper. Amen. And our sacrifice of praise comes from a humble heart, from within our spirit that chooses to honor God in spite of pain, in spite of what looks lost. We are still choosing, aren't we, to honor the God of gods, the Lord of lords, King of kings. Amen? Amen. Why? Because he sent Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 15 tells us, Now thanks be unto God. When? Now. Whether it's in the middle of what you're going through, or if it's before something hits you, right? Now. Now's the time. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to, to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. 
Amen? Amen. So, when we are esteeming the word like we need to be, holding it in our hearts as it is in all reality, the word from God, amen? Um, we are maintaining our faith and we are stopping the possibility, preventing the possibility of losing our healing, of letting healing slip through us because we are choosing to hold on to his word. And what does the Bible tell us? What does the word tell us? We all know it in Proverbs 4, that healing, that the word of God is healing, right? It's health to all our flesh, right? It's life to those that find it. And I know we've found it. Let us keep it and let us keep speaking it and let us keep our eyes on it, amen? Amen. So let's consider how different our attitude should be or the manner in which we are hearing and giving greater attention to what it is the Word is telling to us. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going to go back to my notes now. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. So, back to the angels that were praising God. Amen. The good story, the awesome news, all right? Did they see something that the shepherds hadn't seen yet? Is it possible... Um, let me get there. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> uh, don't you just love it when your notes come together? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Okay. They praise God because of the place from where they were seeing this. And you might think, okay, so they had an advantage over us, some will say, because they were in the presence of God. They were seeing things down on the earth Knowing, but believing that who had sent his son was God himself, angels already knew what to expect, didn't they? But yet, didn't Jesus tell us in Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled? Didn't he tell us that the kingdom of God is at hand? Repent and believe the gospel. Didn't he tell us these things while he was still walking the earth? So if we haven't fully ex applied to our heart the word of truth, as John 17, 17 tells us, Jesus prayed this for us. He said, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. And he's praying to his Father God, our Father God, right? As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through faith. Through the truth, I'm sorry. Sanctified through the truth. What is sanctified? That is set apart. Sanctified is merely being set apart. We are set apart according to the, to the word of God. We are set apart according to God. We are his children. We are his saints. The Bible tells us so. As believers, we are his saints. We are sanctified. And now here Jesus is praying that we would be sanctified through the truth. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God, its love and power, had come down to earth in the form of the Son of God. Amen. So there was much to rejoice about. And now here we are. We're on this side of it. It has happened. Jesus has come of a virgin. He has come and given his life. Our sins are forgiven, but not before our bodies were healed. Amen? He has risen from the dead. He is seated in heaven, now ever living to speak on our behalf, right? Intercede for us, right? So why aren't we rejoicing all the more? Because we see it as done. It's already happened. Yet the angels were rejoicing because they hadn't seen it yet, yet they knew where it was coming from. And they knew who had come. Jesus himself, the Son of God, was come to the earth for us, right? To redeem us, deliver us, heal us, save us. Amen? Uh, for us to be forgiven. Okay. There was much to celebrate, but there's all the more and any more 
so you know, celebrating that needs to be going on needs to be going on, right? Because he has saved us. We are forgiven and we are healed. If you just say it to yourself right now, I am healed. <laughs> and, and well, you know what? You know where the anointing is? It's within you. I know. And it's within you. But stand up and praise him. Stand up wherever you are, Harriet. Stand up right where you are and praise him. There's where the anointing will come upon you, is when you choose, I am going to praise him. No matter what my body feels right now or what it might look like, I am going to praise him because it's been done. He has healed us. The angels praised because they knew what was going to happen. We praise because we know what has happened. It has happened. Say that with me. It has happened. Praise God, we are healed. We are saved. We are delivered from every form of wickedness from that enemy. We are saved. It doesn't matter what he brings to us. We are saved, right? We are saved in our minds. We are saved in, tor in torment, right? We are saved from worry. I don't mean to say we are saved in torment. We are saved from we are saved from torment. We are saved from worry, aren't we? We are saved from depression. We are saved from fear, right? We are saved from every form that the enemy would come to bring against us. And let me remind you, I know you've heard this, but I'm going to remind you, where is this coming from? What type of enemy is bringing this to us? Let me remind you, he is a defeated enemy. That was the reason Jesus came, 1 John 3, 18. For this purpose was, a, was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil, that he might undo what the devil has done. I'll tell you right now, it's been undone. Everything he's brought against you is undone. Amen. Everything he's brought against us is undone. Everything. Anything he's brought against me, ah, it's undone. That enemy has no place. He can have no place in us. I love that, that Jesus himself lives in us. And with Jesus living in us, who or what can come against us? Amen? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Our sins are forgiven. You stand before God when you received Jesus as when as when we received Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, our sins were undone. Our brokenness was undone. Everything incomplete, every unwholesome thing in us became undone. We became whole. We became complete. And, you know, I know it doesn't feel like it. But what is that to us compared to the truth of God? What should that be to us compared to the truth of God? We've got to choose to step over that. We make a choice to step over it, right? We make a choice to pick up the word and, and use the word to step over that enemy, defeated as he is, I'll tell you, defeated. He is forever defeated. The word is forever established in heaven. And what was destroyed down here on the earth is still destroyed. As heaven sees it, is the way we're supposed to see it. It is still destroyed. The works that Jesus did and completed, they're still completed. They're still done. That enemy is still a liar. He's still defeated. And his works are still coming to nothing against us. Do we believe that? Yes. Amen. I believe it. I believe it. By his stripes, we have been healed. Amen. Everything that was destroyed 
is still now destroyed. The truth is forever established because the Lord Jesus came and he completed his work. It is not unfinished. It is finished. Jesus said so himself. It is finished. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give you thanks, Father God. I give you praise, Father God. Amen and amen. I've already gone to 1 John 3.18. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. It's done. His works are destroyed. Jesus' work is completed. That's all there is to it. In my heart, in my mind, the way I choose to see things, I cannot make that decision for you guys. I've made that decision. Whatever Jesus said, I receive it. Whatever he's done, I've received it. Have you received it? We were talking about gifts that hadn't been opened yet. There was one last thing. We were talking about gifts last week that hadn't been opened yet. And of course, the first and most important gift was the gift of salvation, right? And then I started thinking, okay, well, there are other gifts. Um, I can't say they haven't been opened yet. But they, these are gifts, and I'm talking about from the fruit of the Spirit, fruits of the Spirit, okay? And you're thinking, well, what's that got to do with healing? Well, we do know, according to um, Proverbs, I believe it's 18, that tells us what? The strong spirit of a man. The spirit, okay, in the King James, it says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can, who can, who can bear, I'm sorry. And the Amplified Version will tell us the strong spirit of a man, right, will, will sustain him. So what does a strong spirit got to do with healing? What does a strong spirit have to do with what Jesus has done? Well, he has also sent us the comforter, right? And who is the comforter? The Holy Spirit himself. And when we have the Holy Spirit in us, then he grows, right? The fruits of the Spirit can show up in us. And I know this is probably not something anybody was expecting today, but um, I had compiled a sheet, and this is not it. <laughs> I had compiled a list of um, the fruits of the Spirit, and they're in the back of the room. I'll get them later. Or if anybody wants a copy, I made copies. And these fruits of the Spirit... You can expect them to grow in you as you, what? As you nurture them, as you live them out, right? As you act on them, right? It, that will get that fruit of the Spirit. What, is the, what are the fruits of the Spirit? I mean, let's, go to, let's go to Ephesians. No, I'm sorry, Galatians. Let's go to Galatians 5. This really wasn't how I saw the class ending, but I'm going to go ahead and go here anyway. The Lord had brought this to me, and I'm going to keep with it and not lose it. So, um, you know what? That's not it, is it? Yeah, 525. 525. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. But the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 522. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. What's the importance of these? Because against such there is no law. Now, that doesn't give us an excuse to live beyond the law, but when we have these manifesting in us, we are strong. Okay? You will be a stronger person spiritually as you allow these to grow. Okay, so if anyone is interested, that was just a side note. I did go ahead and compile a, a list of the fruits of the Spirit, and there are scriptures that will bring that to you. And um, it's as you, as you will, as you decide to um, meditate on those, read those, speak them, declare those over you. This is who I am. This is what I have. Amen. Amen. And, this is what I, and this is what I can do. So um, we were going to have communion um, today. So, yeah, Brandy, sure. So as Brandy's getting communion, actually that is why I had First John 3.18. It's not a verse you normally usually hear for communion, but without this coming to pass, without this purpose, it is a big reason why we are able to celebrate communion. 
Jesus coming for us, right? Our sins forgiven, right? Our health and our healing restored to us, right? Healing in our bodies, right? Why? Because he came, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior who has come. He came and destroyed the works of the devil. What was that devil doing? He was hindering everything, right? He was causing condemnation to come upon us, wasn't he? He was holding us down under condemnation. He was holding us down with weakened and um, bodies that were just sick with pain. And Jesus came and destroyed that. All of his plans have been destroyed. This is the reason we can celebrate, isn't it? We can celebrate communion. We can celebrate what Jesus has done for us. We just take the bread and we just remember, Jesus, what you have done for us. We thank you that as your body was whipped beyond recognition, that you took sickness and disease from us. You carried it on your body so we would not. You felt the pain, the agony, and the anguish so that we would not. You set us free from every work of that foul enemy. You set us free, Lord God, and we glorify you, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving from our lips. We glorify you, Father God, that as we give our hearts to you, and we continue to praise and worship you, and we continue to expect that everything that you have provided for us, Lord God, we are open to receiving it and taking it even today, even where we are right now at this moment. We receive all you have given and done for us in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the bread together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Father. Glory to God. And the blood of Jesus. The blood still speaks for us today. The blood cleanses. The blood has forgiven us, amen. His shed blood was so that all man could receive forgiveness from every evil work, amen, from the fallen nature. We receive forgiveness in this, amen. We stand right now. We stand as if there is nothing between us and the Father God. We have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. He shed his blood so that we could come into the kingdom once again, come into fellowship once again, into communion and to love and to um, loving on him and being in his presence once again as if there were no thing between us. And we give you the praise for it, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Let's take this together. Father, I thank you. Thank you for the word that you have sent and healed us. Thank you for delivering us, Father, from our, even from ourselves. Thank you for delivering us, even from our own destructions. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for delivering us from an enemy that is forever now defeated. Thank you, Lord God, for the freedom that we have to come into your presence, Father, and worship and praise you. Thank you for the freedom that we have to choose Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we will come into the kingdom with God. And not any time sooner than when it is the time, right? When our lives are satisfied, right? When we are satisfied with what we have done for the Lord, right? Not any sooner, I pray, God. I give you the praise and the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thanks for tuning in to Healing School today. If you're ever in our area, we encourage you to come and join us every Monday at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you'd like to know more information about Faith Heights Church, please visit www.faithheights.org.